Office. My name is Redfire, and welcome to my computer basics class. Um, some things to start out. Uh, when you are going through this class, you should expect that you should be able to understand how computers work and what they do. I don't believe you'll be able to create your own computer. You may need to do some extra research for that, but you will be able to simulate your own computer in Minecraft by the end of this class, guaranteed. Um, my split this class up into eight different sections. So I'm starting out the introduction of Slash Essentials, which I'll be going over uh, my introduction, who I am, uh, what this is about, and uh, it's essentials that you will need to continue throughout this class. Um, the second part um, is Boolean Algebra. I will be going over the mathematical side to computer engineering. Um, part three will be Redstone Basics, and Redstone is the engineering side to Minecraft, which we will be using to simulate computers. Part four is logic gates. We will explain what logic gates are on paper and in Minecraft as a simulation to show what they look like in real life. In part five, we will explain some logic components within Minecraft and show these simulations. With part six, we will show the ethical use of logic gates and logic components within a security system created within Minecraft as a simulation. It is very it is realistic in real life though. Um, part seven is going to be the mathematical side to computer engineering, um, how computers add and subtract, and we are going to be creating a calculator. And part eight will be the finale. Um, you'll explain CPU structure and review everything. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this lecture, and I am ready to begin. Um, good luck, and... Part 2 of my computer course. So, today we, we will be going over Boolean Algebra. So, we're going to jump right into this. The first question you guys might be asking is, what is Boolean Algebra? So, you know how we, we have normal mathematics where we have 1 times 3, right? 1 times 3, we get 3, right? I mean, yeah, right? We get this, whatever, all that stuff. Boolean Algebra is different. Boolean Algebra consists of only numbers 1 and 0, okay? But you have to think of these numbers as something different here. So when we think of 1 and 0, we don't want to think of 1 and 0 as the math that we are used to. We want to think of these 1s and zeros as 1 would be something, okay? And two, 0 would be nothing. I'm abbreviating because I can't really, you know, draw that fast, right? So this will help you understand how balloon algebra works and why it makes sense and all that stuff because boolean algebra is the basics to computer engineering and you need to understand this to create and design and map out your own circuits and engineering um, computational machines okay so let's do some addition so this is boolean algebra addition so there are, in boolean algebra we have multiplication and addition um, and we consist those of numbers. Okay, so if we have a zero and a zero, which I forgot to add, zeros are called low voltage inputs, and ones are also considered high voltage inputs. Like like I said before, ones are something, zeros nothing. Okay, so this is addition. This is addition. All right. So zero plus zero is zero. Right. Well, we all know that. Um, 1 plus plus 0 is equal to 1 because we got something and nothing. We have something. Something plus something is something. So remember, this is not 1 plus 1. This is something and something we consider the plus sign and 
or or no we could we consider plus sign n in um in this so something and something is something and then the final one something I mean nothing and something is something this is our addition or boolean algebra you just have to memorize that um, to just understand the language of it then we have multiplication so for multiplication it's simple simpler but a little different okay so in multiplication we don't really call the multiplication sign multiplying we consider this this multiplication sign this guy right here we consider that equal to or so some let's say John went to the supermarket he could choose cheese or bread so that's what we consider the multiplication sign in boolean algebra rather than actually multiplying the numbers together so for multiplication it'd be you have zero or zero and that is zero you have one or zero so we would get one why is this the case because we have one or zero it could be both of them but in boolean algebra we tend to go for the higher voltage to come out so because one is here we take out a one and we can have zero one equals to one and one one is equal to one. One or one is equal to one. So this is multiplication. All right. So just get that in your heads right there. All right. So now we are going to move on to uh, some algebra in Boolean algebra. Right. So we have all of that stuff. Now we're going to move into the algebra part. So let's just get rid of some of that. Let's get rid of all that. Alright. Let's get rid of all this. Alright. Now let's get to the algebra part. So, something I needed to add. In Boolean algebra, this sign right here means not. Which, literally, what it does changes the digit from 1 to 0 or 0 to 1 changes it to the opposite. So for example, if I had 0, not, this would equal to 1. And if I had 1, not, this would equal to 0. Ugh. See, they are the opposites. Alright, so now let's get to the algebra part. If we have A, plus 1, what do we get? So, A could either be 0 or 1. So 0 plus 1, we know, would be 1, and 1 and 1 would be 1. So A and 1 would always equal to 1. Alright, now let's try not A plus 1. What would we get here? Well, if a was 0, then not a would be 1, and 1 plus 1 is 1, and if a was 1, then not a would be 0, and 0 plus 1 is 1. So there you go, you would have that. Then, let's say we had a, a, plus plus zero well one plus zero would equal to one right if a was one one plus zero would equal to one if it was zero zero plus zero equals zero so a plus zero would be a because we don't know a could be either one or zero right not a 
not a plus zero equals, let's see, so if a was one, not one would be zero plus zero, that'd be zero. And if a was zero, not zero would be one, one plus zero is one. So this would also be a. Okay, so this is all the basic algebra you will need to know for Boolean algebra. We use Boolean algebra in things we call truth tables. And these are an engineer's best friend when it comes to computer design. This is what they look like. So they would look like something like this. So this would be your input, your output, and then this could be some other random stuff over here. We're not going. We're going to ignore this column right now. So we all the possible inputs we could have, and all the possible outputs could be one, one, zero, zero, right? And this could be zero. And this could be one. And this could be zero. And this could be one. These are all the possible inputs and outputs we could have alright so with this right let's say we wanted this is our normal output and input okay let's say we wanted to not the input okay well, let's say we wanted to not the input so we would get 0 0 1 1 so this is the basics of boolean algebra um, next part we will go over logic expressions thank you guys for listening to this lecture i hope you enjoyed if you have any questions link them down in the comments below and subscribe tutorial um and we will be going over in-game logic gates soon but what i forgot to go over which was originally part three now part three and part four are switched um i forgot to go over um the redstone basics and components so you can see i'm in minecraft i'm gonna make this full screen for you guys so i am in minecraft and this is the creative world that we will be going throughout this series in to explore some of our interesting Interesting creations. Siri went off of my phone right there. Alright. So I said it oh let me let me lower this game volume. That is super loud. That is super loud. There we go. Okay. So I set it off. Oh, that is still really loud. That is still really loud. Um let's just bring it down to four. Okay, so I set it up so we would have an organized way of getting around our Minecraft world. And this is the beginning part to it. Alright, so we just take a, we would take a little way all the way down there. So let's go through all of the redstone blocks in Minecraft. So, an introduction to Minecraft. Minecraft is a game of blocks. You put blocks down and you build things. You make them look cool. Each block has color to it. They are made out of pixels. Yada yada yada. It looks nice. The difference between redstone and Minecraft is redstone actually affects the game. So normally in Minecraft, you could do something like this. You could put a block up in the air, right? And it wouldn't fall. There's no gravity. It's just it's just there, right? It's kind of it's just for creating. Where redstone involves all the computer logic engineering in Minecraft. You can create all sorts of functions with redstone. You can create computer engineering um, functions as well. So I'm going to explain what each redstone component does before we actually get into the actual redstone stuff. So here we have the day slash night sensor, which this detects when it's daytime or nighttime. Um, for here, and oh, when it when it when it's the sun, right? When it's daytime. It will send an electrical output, which through this thing called redstone. 
and you could toggle it on and off like this. But we won't be using this. We will be using this redstone torch, which is very important. So this is called an activator. It's in an activator class, meaning it creates electricity. And this redstone torch will turn on any redstone that is touching it, like adjacent to it. For example, this. See that redstone torch is on right there. All right. Be and that will send a signal through that wire to wherever we want it to go. So redstone torches are very important. Redstone blocks do the same as redstone torches, but they do not have the ability to be used through bud mechanics, which we will explain later on, but bud mechanics aren't really that important. Just know we won't be using redstone blocks throughout this tutorial. Pressure plates and pressure plates are activators. You step on them and they create an electrical output. If you're off of them, they won't like that levers um it's when you flick the lever right when you left click on them you can create an electrical output when you left click on them again you turn it off so this is this would be your one this would be your zero trip wires and buttons they are both activators but we don't really need to go into those because we won't be using them uh torches these redstone torches are also considered transporters, which means they transport a, from electrical current to one place to another. So with this, this you could stack torches high up like one, 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 and it could send a signal going up in a vertical direction. But we will, won't be really using that that much in this. We will mainly be using torches for creating knot gates, and you guys see later on. Repeaters are very important. They basically keep your um, signal alive. So in a redstone, um, you the you have like a wire and all that, but electricity can't really extend that far. In Minecraft, it doesn't go on forever. There's like a point where it stops. So every 15 blocks, redstone loses its its, its like electricity. So you see here, it's like dying out and now it's dead. So what you have to use, you use this thing called a repeater, which will regain the redstone strength and setting, set its signal again. Now the problem with repeaters are they take a tick. And Minecraft is measured in ticks, which is the time, Minecraft, time interval Minecraft uses to measure its time. The more repeaters you use in your redstone device, the longer it will take to finish out its task. So you when generally when Minecraft engineering engineers are creating computers you generally don't want a lot of repeaters and redstone torches because they both create um, ticks and all that you uh, the best you could do is have none but that would be impossible because redstone torches are essential uh, dust is like wires they transfer currents and all these things aren't really important for now except pistons and Sticky pistons, they extend forward like this whenever a input goes into them, like this. Um, and lights turn on when they get a high voltage and turn off when they get a low voltage. Also doors, same thing, they open, close. All right, now here's some redstone things that you need to learn. This is called hard powering. So... A redstone can go, let me get some, let me get a lever out here. So normally a redstone goes and travels along its path, but sometimes you could take a redstone, put it through a block, right, and it would go through it, through it. So there are multiple cases how this works. So normally if you put a redstone through a block, this is called soft powering, so it won't power anything coming out of the block, but it will power whatever is on top of the block because you see how it connects from the block to there and all that. Um, it would also power redstone torches that are on top of the block. Okay, it will also power torches that are that are on the side of the block, like over here, in any direction. Okay, that's called soft power though because it won't send a signal out of it. It will just send a signal through that block. Hard powering is when we take a signal and we shove it through a block and then some we need to have a repeater at the end. And what the repeater does, it takes that signal, refreshes it, and extends it. So what happens when this goes into a block? This is its 15. 
when we have this here it restarts and it creates a new fresh program we could also have something like this a repeater going into a block all right and this would work too so these are some basic redstone um, ideologies that you will need to understand and how to use it uh, this, thank you for listening to this part this is part four and we will be continuing part three um, which part three was part four I just mixed them up we will be continuing the part three um, in the next lecture and we will be going over logic gates all this fun stuff so I already taught you guys what logic gates are but what it looks like in Minecraft and how they actually work, we will go over that. All right. Part three of this class slash course in computer basics. So today we'll be going over logic gates. All right. So what is a logic gate? Well, a logic gate, here is, would be a depiction of them. A logic gate is, takes two or more inputs, two, one, one or more inputs, and sets them for a specific output, putting them through different logical expressions. And we will be going over all of them today, so you guys fully understand them. So, there are seven different logic gates right now that we have. There, there may be more, there may be less, but I will be going over these specific seven. All right. So we have the first, uh, uh, first gate. First, before a gate, we have what we call is an input and an output. Okay. So this would be A, and this would be B. We would have an input and an output. So if A was on, so if A was equal to one. B would equal to 1. If A was equal to 0, B would equal to 0. Simple, right? Okay. Let's erase all this. Now we're going to move into some of the logic gates. So, a NOT gate, okay, looks something like this. You have an input for A, then we have our triangle, and then we have this little bubble at the end which reverts our signal. So we had a 1 here for our input. We would have a 0 for our output. If we had a 0 for our input, we'd have a 1 for our output. Simple. Like that. All right. Now we're getting to some of the complicated stuff. This is called an AND gate. And is one of the essentials in computer engineering and design. The AND gate has two inputs, so this would be A, and this would be B, and these two inputs would go into this semicircle, kind of like, kind of looks like a plug that you plug into your wall. This is called an AND gate, right? And it goes out into this output. This output would be output A, B. Right. So how do you how do we explain this? We can explain this using truth tables. Okay. So we have output input A, input B, and then A B. So this is what an AND gate would look like. Okay. Let me just extend these. All right, so if A was 1 and B was 1, then AB would equal to 1. If A was 1 and B was 0, AB would equal to 0. If A, if A was 0 and B was 1, AB would be 0. And if A was 0 and B was 0, AB would be 0. So what does this truth table mean? So this is saying 
if A has a high voltage and B has a high voltage, then AB will equal to 1. So this is saying if, if only if there are two inputs, you will get an output. Otherwise, if we have 1, 0, 0, 1, or 0, 0, we will not be able to get our output of AB. So that is an AND gate. Now let's look at an OR gate. Okay, so we're going to use this same chart. Make a trip table for an OR gate. And then we're going to write it, draw it out. So, A, if A is 1 and B is 0, then AB would be 1. If A is 0 and B is 1, then AB would be 1. If A is 1 and B is 1, AB would be 1. And if A is 0 and B is 0, AB would be 0. So, now, now when we look at this, we can see that an OR gate is saying if there is any input that is a high voltage, then we will get a high voltage output, which is equal to 1. And an OR gate looks something along the lines of this. Right? Try, not my best drawing. Like that. All right. Then we have something called a NOR gate and a NAND gate. A NOR gate and a NAND gate is the opposites, the NOT version of an AND and an OR. Okay, so we're going to start with a NOR gate. A NOR gate, so this would be NOT AB. If one and if we had one and zero this would equal to 1 because this is 1. If we had 0 and 1, it would equal to 0. If we had 1 and 1, it would equal to 0. And if we had 0 and 0, that would equal to 1. So this is would be not AB, okay? Because it is the opposite. And we would do the same thing for the AND gate. We would reverse the outputs in our truth table, and that's what we would get when we plug it into our chart. And the difference between when we visualize it, a not gate and a not or gate and a not and gate, we would have this little dot representing the not right there. All right. Then we have two gates over here, and these are called exclusive or gates. All right. So they are or gates, but here's how they work. I'm trying to erase all this. Here's how these exclusive OR gates work. So, it looks something along the lines of this. You have two inputs. Like that. No, that's not, it can't be rosy. I mean, pointy. It's got to be round. Like this. And then there. Okay. So this is what an exclusive OR gate looks like, or XOR gate. We call them XOR gates. So an exclusive OR gate or XOR gate does something like this in the truth table, okay? If A, this is going to be A, A, oh my gosh, A, B, and then A, B, okay? If A was 1 and B was 0, AB would be 1. If A was 0 and B was 1, AB would be 1. But if A was 1 and B was 1, AB is 0. And if A is 0 and B is 0, AB is 0. So an exclusive OR gate is saying only if it is exclusively OR, meaning only if there is two different inputs going in, meaning there's a high and a low, a 1 and a 0, a 0 and a 1. If it's a 1 and a 1, it won't work. If it's a 0 and 0, you won't get an output. You will just get 0. If it's too different, you will get an output. And an exclusive NOR gate is literally the opposite. It just flips the signs. So 1 and 0 would be 0, 0 and 1 would be 0, 1 and 1 would be 1, and 0 and 0 would be 1. So these are the outputs and inputs of logic gates. 
but sometimes it can be confusing to see on paper. So we are going to explore logic gates inside of Minecraft. All right, let us take a look at this. Now part three, or part four as I mixed up the names, how we'll be going over the logic gates in Minecraft. So as, you, as we learned before, we know what they do, but now you'll experience them in Minecraft. So this is a low input and this is a high input. So when we flick this lever, we send a signal into this block, which hard powers it, I mean soft powers it, turning off this torch that turns off that signal, okay? This is, this is a not gate, right? So normally if it's off, if it's zero, that'll be one, right? And if it's one, it would be zero. All right, you can think of this as opposite. This is a sending a signal into a block. So if it's on, that's one. If it's off, that's zero. All right, an AND gate. So with an AND gate, we we build an AND gate with two two torches on top, one torch here. So how it works is if we turn one torch off, we'll turn that off. But this redstone thing will be still will still be powered if we turn both of them. Both torches will be off, allowing this redstone piece to turn off, turning this torch on to turn this power on. So if we have one, one, A, B is one, and so on and so forth. All right, we explain what they do in the order. I'm just showing you how to build them. An OR gate would be literally the same thing as a NOT gate. Where is it, where is it working? Right here. The OR gate is literally the same thing as a NOT gate except with no torches at all. So you flick it, it goes on. The um, the NAND gate is is the opposite of the NOT gate. We just take out that torch in the middle right there. We flick one, doesn't do anything. We flick two, it goes off. Zero, zero, gets a zero. That's it. A ZOR gate um, is the same thing as an OR gate. A torch right there, so it just flips the output. I mean, not XOR, they, that's a NOR gate. This is XOR gate. This is a little bit complicated. So, XOR gate works like this um, we have two signals here. So, when we flick this one, we hard power this block, turning off that torch, which turns off that torch too. Turning off that block, which turns off that torch and that torch, which stops that signal, which turns on this torch that was inverted to turn on that block, right? But if we put on this one, it will do all that, allowing this one to be on. But then it will also turn off this one, which was powering this that kept this one off. That was powering, that was not powering both of these. But now that they're powered, block will be off and done so. It won't work. All right. And to create a XOR, XNOR gate, an XNOR gate, the difference between XOR gate and an XNOR gate do we have a simple um, not gate at the end right over here okay so that is the continuation of part four four I'm calling it four now thank you components some I mean logic components um, we use logic logic gates to create these things and it's right over here okay so before we get into that, we need to understand something first called binary. So we work in a world where we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Binary numbers are 1 and 0, as we learned. But they the way they represent our numbers is like so. It is its number to the power times 2 to the power of its area. So, so right now that's 0. So that would be 0 times 2 to the power of 0 because it's in the 0th place. We always start with 0 when we're working with binary. So let's say that was 1. So this would be 1 times 2 to the 0th power. So 2 to the 0th power is 1. So this would be 1, right? This one over here, so that would be 1 times 2 to the 1st power. That would be 2. This is a 0, right? This one, oh, you think it's 3, but it's not. This would be 1 times 2 to the 3rd power and 2 to the 3rd power 2 to the 3rd power is 8 right, hold on, is my, oh wait no, this would not be to the 3rd 
this would be 2 to the second power, I'm sorry. This is 2 to the third. 2 to the second power, this should be 4 right over here because this is in the th it's in the second place because we have 0, 1, 2. So second, so 2 to the second, that's 4, so this would be 4. So if you want to say 5, that's 1, 4, that's 5. All right, and it goes on and on and on and on and on. And binary is very useful because let's, if you, well, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't think 50 binary inputs would be nothing, right? 50 binary inputs creates over 4 quadrillion outputs within single digit numbers. That's the insane capacity of binary. So let's get into some of this stuff. So we got something here called buffers. What buffers do is it's like a parent and a child. Um, you can think of a buffer. Um, this is the, this is your dad. So your buffer is saying, "Hey, um, if even if you turn this lever on and off, it won't do anything because I restricted your lever to do anything, right?" But let's say your buffer, the your buffer dad, we're gonna call it the dad switch, says, "Okay, I'm turning off parental um, restrictions." Then you can do, you can turn it on, you can turn it off. Do whatever you want, all right. But once this goes on, it's stuck on, and th this is the same thing as the other one, just it's inverted. So if the buff, you won't be able to turn the light switch on no matter what, unless the buffer dad switch turns off, allowing you to control the switch, like that. All right. So that's a buffer. PLA, or also known as programmable logic array. Um, these things take a bunch of AND and OR gates and put them into a diagram to represent a couple outputs, multiple, two, three, four outputs. Okay, so um, I have some already set up now. So A and not C would equal to Y1, which would be the first output. So Y1 is right here. So it's you guys can do some research on PLAs. Um, I don't really find them that useful, but they are very important in computer engineering. But you're, there are ways to get over them. Um, I don't really find interest in them. So if A is activated here, because right, we're using this NOT gate as a switch for between A and that, and then we need NOT C. So where is C? There it is. It's already activated. So that's why C we have Y1 activated. And there's a bunch of math involved in all this, but I won't be going over um, PLAs in this course. They involve a difficulty range a little bit higher than what is what we are doing. Um, decoders. Decoders take binary inputs and put them into normal numbers. For example, we always start at zero, so we have zero, right? But let's say we had this. This would be one, right? So we'd have that's zero, zero, one, you know. And then let's say we had this. This would be this would be five, right? Because we have two to one times two to the power of two. That's four plus one times two to the power of zero. That's one. That would be five. That goes to five. So it just works like this. The way you'd make one, um, you take all the outputs, set them in through here. And then the torches that are up like this, like that torch and that torch and that torch, those are all the ones, and the torches on the side should be zeros. And don't ask me why, but it ends up working the relationship between all of them that only a specific one is lit up. All right. Um, I am not going to detail with all these because they are very complicated and they all really need their own video, but I'm giving you a brief explanation of what they do. If you want to know how to make them or some advanced knowledge of them, you may do your own research as well. I'm just going over the basics about computer in this course. So, this is a multiplexer. There are a couple ways to make them in Minecraft. They basically take a bunch of inputs and put them towards one output. So, for example, here we have two inputs, right? We put them both on. So, right now, this input is not doing anything, okay? Right, so let's say if we shut off this, um, it wouldn't affect that, okay? If we shut off this, it would because this one is turning that on, right? 
But if we do this, right now we're blocking that, but we're hard powering that block, sending a signal there. So if we shut this off, it does nothing. But now this one is in control of the output. So that's what a multiplexer does. There's like multiple ways of doing them. This is a stretched version. Us redstoners prefer to use multiplexers like this. And then this is a 4-bit multiplexer using a decoder at the top. So you can decode which one is going to be off, and then you can invert that and all that stuff. Demultiplexer is the opposite of a multiplexer. It takes one input and then decides by a control bit what output it will go through. So this is control and it's saying, oh, you're going to go there, and you're going to go there. So that's what a demultiplexer does. All right. So those are the basic... Um, basic com logic computer components. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments. I know I went through this very quickly, but there is just a lot we need to get through to finish this. Thank you guys for watching, and please subscribe if you haven't already. Part six to my computer engineering course will be this example over here. Um, it is a computer system. So what I've created um, it is a little house. It has a specific passcode. You have to set in the passcode using these numbers. And whenever you're ready, so let me let me just put, I'll put in some random numbers. This is probably not the right code. Like this. Um, you select this for the light will be on. Okay. And then because we did not get the right code, there will be an alarm going off. And it will continue to go off until we turn this off. That is trying to open up our door. So let's look at our code because I sped it up so you could see. So we see only four should be activated. All right, and you can customize it and change it when you're inside. So four should be activated. So if we select that, we get a little ding. Tells us it opens. And now we can go inside. So when we are inside and we want to change our stuff, we pro we want to put a lever down there, and then we could put it up like that, and that will also send a signal to that because it's a different um passcode. But that's fine. We could just turn that off right there, and then we can go back in here, close the door. All right. So now we have a new passcode two four, and we can just go out through the door. Um, how this works? Okay. So it starts off we using a decoder to decode our binary input, which is not really binary to the visual eye, but we are considering it is considered binary and it makes things a ton easier. Binary input is set through these buses that go into a a uh, demultipl no it go into a multiplexer, right? And this multiplexer is controlled by the inputs from inside of the house that go into this decoder and only one of these is active okay and the active multiplexer this activates a buffer um, which allows that signal to go through whenever you have the correct for this one this so when you it would allow this signal to go through through here and it will allow it to go through here if you have the correct code it will go through because for these other ones, you see how the torch is on, it won't go through, see that buffer, but the buffer is off because of the multiplexer. So we'll go through here, go around here, and then this, that signal will go all the way down there to the house, and that will open the door. Um, let's say it is the wrong signal. So it will still send a signal through here. Um, and normally, whenever you flick that switch, whenever you flick that switch, it will send a power signal through this little bus line right here that goes into this AND gate. And this end gate will not do anything. Um, will not do anything unless you have the correct passcode, which will also will turn that one off, which will create the end gate to go on, which will stop this um, this line over here that's going through here to create this um, alarm that's going off. It's a little complicated, but if you guys have any questions, you can ask me in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. And we will go into part six, I believe, part six, part six or part seven, hmm, wait, yeah, part six, or it might be part seven, and you know, it doesn't really matter, the parts don't even matter anymore, okay.
Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Well, another part of this mini series of my course. I'm going to go over through the math of computer engineering. So, I'll get, we'll jump right into this because we got to go quick. So, half adders. Half adders take two inputs and add them together. So, one and one, zero and zero, zero and one. Um, it, they, they add them together, but they, they take two binary inputs and add them together. But they do not add um, like multiple bits. Bits are um, multiple binary inputs. They only add one bits, bits of one. So for example, this would be one plus one. So we would get it goes into so one plus one is not one, right? One plus one is two. So we would take this and it would be a carry, and the carry this would represent two. This is the second bit for two, right? The, we cannot add two plus two, but we could add. We could add one plus one, and then we could add another one. We could continue adding one and one and one and one and one. That's what half adders are for. You can't do math with half adders, all right? Well, that's what full adders are for. Full adders, you could take two inputs and add them to create another thing. So what it does, it takes in the actual carry and adds the carry into another output that helps create our, um, you know, our output for our number and I know it's not really this is XOR gate and it's XOR gate and they're going into an AND gate over here so let's say let's say these are both on one and one power would go through here and this power if we had something going through here so we have a carry already so we already know this would be one but then we have something going through here this turns that off alright and we're gonna have a carry going through here so we'd have one and then let's say we had a another thing over here oh uh, uh, here we have something over here this would represent three because we have three dots right because this would be two and that would be one three right, if we had more we you would be able to see better as to the bits I have that for my calculator you we will look at that and then a subtractor just subtracts but we won't really be going into the subtractor because it's a little bit complicated and not in this course range we don't really need to know that okay the calculator um so this is how it works it is an it takes an adder which adds two binary inputs and it represents them on the screen using an rom which is a read only memory which is not ram we will go over ram later in the next part the final part but read only memory um, is basically is is kind of like a PLA, but not necessarily. It just set memory that it cannot be changed ever, can only be read, it cannot be written, right? And then you have your graphics or whatever. So we use these binary. So we know uh, we know this in binary is five, right? Because one, five, four and one is five. Okay, so we would get five for that. Um, I need to label these signs A and B because these are our A inputs and our B inputs for binary. So this would be A and then this would be B. Okay, so now let's say we were adding 5 plus 5. This only adds up to 14 for purposes. I don't want to make it really long and big and yada yada yada. I want to make it nice and simple. So 5 plus 5 would be 10. So we would get 1 zero okay they would go through here add it up and then 10 would come out as a binary input go through the decoder and then when it decodes it go through the rom the read-only memory and then the read-only memory would send a signal through here and representing it on the screen all right um let's do another example let's say we did um seven plus five 7 plus 5 is 12. See, so we would have 12 there. So you see it comes out over here. This is this this would be 12 in binary, right? Because this would be 1 2. This would be 1 times 2 to the power of 3, which would be 8, and this would be 2 times 2 to the power of 4, which would be I mean 2 to the power of 2, which would be 4. So n8 plus 4 is 12. So that would be 12, and when we put in a decoder and ROM, we get this. Alright, so that is basic addition. Thank you guys for watching this part of my lecture, and we will go into the final part of this course. And 
If you have any questions, ask them in the comments below. And I know I'm going pretty fast, so if you would like me to slow down or make some other videos explaining some specific topics, please comment and I will do so. Hey guys, this is the fourth, I mean the eighth, no, seventh and final part of this series. And we will be going over CPU and computer components. If I missed up all the parts throughout this series, please ignore that. Okay. So CPU components. In the CPU, we need RAM, an ALU, and a heater. So, uh, I mean, not a heater, a fan. So fans, what they do is they prevent overheation overheat so your computer would normally overheat mine is overheating right now because of all the stuff running on it basically uh, we we tend to push our computer programs to the max to the maximum and th because of this our computer actually heats up to such a high level that it will start melting the electronics inside of it so what we have to do is add fans to cool it off all right then we have two things an ALU and a ROM. ALU is a arithmetic, 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 arithmetic logic unit. What it does is it just does a bunch of addition, multiplication, subtraction, division, um, ands, ors, outputs. Does a bunch of math. It does the math, the outputs, and it figures out what goes to what. All right. But that we don't really need to go over because it's literally the same thing as a calculator a little bit more condensed and a little bit complicated and a little bit more advanced. Um, what I, we will be going over is RAM. So RAM is, uh, this is a 4 by 12 by 9 RAM saw. And what this will do is it, it show, you could, you could put in inputs and it will save them and load them. Like when you save a Google Docs, so you can create a Google Docs, you could add stuff to it, save it, and then load it. So this is how it would work. So we would have four inputs, and these four inputs would be connected to an ALU, right? And we would get some kind of input. So let's just say we got this input into from our ALU, right? So we had three and one. And the ALU would say, oh, we want to save it into this cell. So it would go like that, all right? And now we have it saved into our first memory okay so you see how these two pistons are down they're selected down that's that saves them it I'm not gonna explain how this works because it's a little bit complicated but just know that that saves the electric si the electric signal into those ones so whenever we want to read the first the first part of our cell like our first section it will tell us exactly what we inputted so it tells us input here, and we put an input there, right? Whenever we want to read it, okay? If we ever want to reset one of our cells, we can go like this. And we'll just reset it like that. Um, let's say we wanted two different um, inputs and outputs. So we have this one saved for here, right? And then we could have this one saved for here. So this one is on the, out the back end. So you can see this one, we have one, and this one we have one, too. Right, so if you want to see what they do, right? So if we have we select the first one, we get one, only one on, right? But if we selected the second one, we get both of these on. So that's how a RAM works. You can create your own memory in your machines. It's pretty cool. All right, thank you guys for watching my lecture and course on computer engineering. If you have any questions, ask in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed and learned something from this. If there's anything you would like me to go over in more in-depth detail, um, please tell me and I will do another video in the future shortly. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned.